Hey, Barry Wilson here, Wilson Auto Repair. I notice all the time online that people have questions about their cars and wonder why they don't run right and really don't have a good understanding of what a carburetor actually does and then in turn know how to fix it. So I thought I would not show you how to build a carburetor, but just give you a basic in, uh, piece of information about each individual thing that this carburetor does. So when you have a problem, you'll know where to go look. First thing we need to do though is to make sure you understand kind of the vernacular about carburetors and we'll start with this little thing right here. This is called a one barrel because it has one hole in it and that would be something you'd probably find on an older 40s, maybe early 50s car, uh, six cylinder, maybe some of the V8s, but mostly six cylinder cars and it's a one barrel carburetor. Now where they got the word bar barrel I have no idea, but it means it has one hole. So. Next we'd be going to would be a two barrel, which is one like this, and it's got two holes. And you'll notice when this is what happens when you step on the gas, these holes are opened up by these blades here. They're called throttle plates, and as you step on the gas, you open this up, allowing more gas into the engine, making your car go faster. So that's the two barrel. Now there's a four barrel. That would be something like this that has four holes. One, two, three, four. As you're driving the primary circuit, which is the smaller of the four, these two right here open up. And then when you get on the gas real hard, you see the back ones open up. So these don't open up immediately. This is probably zero to 45. You're getting ready to pass a car, and then all of a sudden you step on the gas, and that opens up right there. And you get additional fuel into the engine to make it go better. Once you kind of get familiar with carburetors, you can always hear these back, what we call the back barrels open up, and there's two ways they open up. Like on this one, they open up with this linkage right here. So when you are looking at your carburetor, if you have a link from where your throttle cable or your throttle rod hooks up to this, back to the back, then you can see that it moves those at some point and opens them up. The other way that they get opened up would be like on this carburetor, where they're opened up with a vacuum module so as the vacuum drops off uh, and comes back it actually sucks this up and opens the back barrels up right here now this is called a square bore because all these holes are the same size most of the holly carburetors come that way whereas this one is a totally different carburetor this is a rochester quadrajet and it came this way with the back barrels being bigger than the front barrels. So now you got a two barrel, a one barrel, and a four barrel carburetor, this being a Rochester Quadrajet. And we're going to put these over here and get them out of the way. This is an Edelbrock, which is one you can buy like at Summit or uh, Jegs. It's a four barrel carburetor. It pretty much has the same footprint as most GM vehicles and is maybe one that you want to think about buying because not all of these carburetors, the Holley and the Edelbrock, will fit on every engine without some adapter plates. So Edelbrock sometimes are better on the GMs, but I think the one that a lot of people prefer are the Holleys because they have more parts, they're easier to rebuild, you can get parts for this, whereas the Edelbrock there are not a whole lot of parts when you get ready to rebuild it or fix it. Now let's just talk for a minute about how these carburetors work. You come out in the morning and you, you first thing you have to do with the carburetor is step on your gas, push your gas pedal all the way to the floor and what that does is engage your choke. This is the choke and you can see that it's kind of like a flue in a fireplace. It closes this hole up so no air can get into the engine and when you're cranking your engine, it's kind of like a, a heavier vacuum and it makes it suck more fuel, which makes the mixture of fuel and air richer, meaning that rich means there's more fuel than there is air, or more fuel than there normally is. And it makes the car easier to start, kind of like the barbecue grill. You know, you squirt more of the fluid onto the coals and the fire lights easier than it does if you give it one squirt and then try to light it. So that's how your choke works, and you open your, your throttle plate every day when you get ready to start in the morning. This will close because the choke right here is a spring-loaded mechanism, 
that when it's cold, it has a lot of tension on it and it pushes your choke closed. Now, if you go out there and your choke stoke stuck open like this, your car's not going to be easy to start when it's cold because the choke's not engaging. That means that this probably your choke thermostat isn't any good. The choke's thermostat looks like this on the inside. It has this coil in here. And as you heat it up with electricity right here, and there should be a wire hooked up to yours, this will relax and then allow the choke to open up as your car warms up. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is once you start it with this choke closed, if it stays closed, this car's not going to run right. So if you have a problem where it starts pretty easy, but then it seems like it's blowing black smoke, doesn't run very well, that means that the choke pull-off isn't opening up this enough to let some additional air in. That's this part right here. See how that works? It has a vacuum line right here. The car starts, vacuum goes to this little component right here, and it pulls back, and look, it opens that choke up, but not all the way, just enough to let some additional air in so that the car will smooth out. Now, the other thing that's going to happen when the choke is working right is the RPMs are going to go way up. It has a cam right here that speeds up the engine while it's cold, and that makes the engine run a little bit faster, makes it warm up better, and it makes it better running when it's first cold. And a lot of times you do that, you start it, and if you're real anxious, you're going to slam it in gear, and it's going to really hit hard. So I always let my cars warm up for 15, 20 seconds, maybe a minute, before I try to get going. I hit the gas one time, and that'll knock this off. That'll take your fast idle right here off, and it'll make it work better. That means that the choke has opened up, and now your car is going to idle at a normal rate. So now let's review that. Your choke closes when you step on the gas like this in the morning. Then as it starts, the choke pull-off pulls it open. And then as it warms up, you hit the gas pedal two or three times when it's finally warmed up. And that will allow this fast idle to slow the car down, the engine down, so that it will run at somewhat of a normal RPM. That's just the cold start part of it. Now let's talk about what happens when it's running. Oh, my car runs real good, but it hesitates every time I step on the gas. Well, you have on this particular car, or, or carburetor, excuse me, this is the accelerator pump. When you step on the gas, you'll see that, that this little thing moves right here, and it's this diaphragm that gets pushed in and out like that. And what it does is it squirts some additional gas down inside of there so that when you take off, it gives it a little bit of extra fuel just to catch up, and then it quits squirting in there. So what you need to do is if you're having a hesitation is to get your flashlight and look down inside the carburetor and work your gas pedal like this and see if you don't see some gas being squirted. It's kind of hard to see but there's two nozzles down in here that actually emit fuel and they look like what I would refer to as an old eyedropper that squirts just a bunch of little squirts of fuel to make that car run better and that has to do with hesitation. So I started my car, it seemed to run okay but when I step on the gas and try to take off it does okay, but it doesn't have the pep that it needs. It needs something extra. That's probably your accelerator pump. It's different on every car. This is on a Ford. If you look at a Chevrolet or a GM, this is a plunger type. It has a piston that goes down through here, and it squirts the fuel out by the same method of stepping on your gas. Now, what if it, what if it just doesn't run right? You notice that it seems to be emitting a lot of black smoke. That's probably because it's too, running too rich. What usually causes that is the adjustment on your float. The float is like in the back of your stool at home, and it, it sets in this cavity right here, and it floats up and down with the fuel level, and that's, that float controls what's known as the needle and seat, these two things. So this is where the fuel is going to come in, and this little device here called the needle seats in here, and the float lifts it up and down to let fuel in depending on whether or not it's sinking down or it's at the right level. And it's obviously going down all the time. Now, if this is not working right or your float is stuck, then it's going to get too much fuel in this cavity. And that fuel has to have some place to go, so it's going to run over into your carburetor, at, in, into these ports, and it's going to make it run rich. One way to know if that's what's causing that is by looking at your exhaust pipe. If it's blowing a lot of black smoke, you probably are running too rich. So one thing you can do if you want to try this on your own, is to take this top off your carburetor and observe this float to see if it's sunk 
or if it if it well, you can touch it with your finger and it should pop back up and down if it doesn't then take it out and shake it to see if it's got any fuel in it these are notorious for filling up with fuel and sinking and causing performance problems in addition the needle and seat will wear out or it'll get a piece of trash in it and it'll either stick or it'll be stuck wide open and it'll be letting too much fuel inside of your car inside of the engine excuse me same thing so now last but not least on the Ford carburetors they have a valve right here this is notorious for going out and it looks like this we call this a power valve but when I grew up everybody called it the backfire valve and it goes under this just take this off and normally if it's not working when you take this cover off it, this will be full of fuel what this does is allow you to be going down the freeway to say 50 miles an hour and ease into the gas and you're going to need a little bit of extra help with that so the power valve will open up and let some additional fuel in there and it works off vacuum it's sealed up on this side of the case and vacuum will pull it open or close it if it's not working right this will be full of fuel and guess what all that fuel is going to get sucked up into your motor through the carburetor plates and it's going to make it run bad so this is on a Ford only now if you're looking at a GM it has needles that set down in here inside the jets and here's a jet right here and these needles right here set in there and they move up and down and when you step on the gas they pull out and let more fuel through the through the um, through the jet of the carburetor they have a tendency to get bent they have a tendency to stick and they will cause a highway hesitation every time you step on the gas it doesn't seem to want to run right that's the problem so that's kind of an overview of this carburetor but you can see that there are many things that can cause different problems now if it doesn't last but not least if it doesn't idle right this is something everybody thinks is the main adjustment this is just a idle adjustment screw that means it only affects the way the car runs with your foot off of the gas at idle once you step on the gas these idle screws have nothing to do with the way this carburetor functions they're on the bottom of this one and let's see here they are on the bottom of the GM right here so we do that with a vacuum gauge we set a vacuum gauge on the engine and adjust these until we get the maximum amount of vacuum and it seems to make the car run rich one of the rule of thumbs is once you kind of get it where you like it back it out about a half to a quarter of a turn last but not least this is a this is a really good thing to have even if you don't use all the parts in it and it's a carburetor kit it's all the parts you need to rebuild a carburetor but the good thing about that it comes with pictures all mechanics like pictures so here's some pictures for you see here it's going to show you how to take that carburetor apart what goes where what part looks like what and all you have to do is get the number off of your carburetor uh, on the Fords there's going to be a little metal tag that's missing on this one on the GM's there is a number on the side right here you call the parts store and give them that number off your carburetor you get a kit you get a piece of paper like this that you can show everybody in the neighborhood that shows exactly how your carburetor is built and once you get good at it then you can see all the specifications here that pertain to the stuff I just talked about of how to set this carburetor up now I didn't want to go into this part of it because I wanted you to understand how to make your decisions as to what you think is causing your car to run bad and if it's related to the carburetor if it's smoking out the tailpipe kind of a black smoke and sitting there kind of jiggling around then you probably got a problem with one of the things that I just talked about I hope this is helpful I'm Barry Wilson with Wilson Auto Repair you can go to my website wilsonauto.com and see a lot of videos that I've done to try to be helpful to you if you need help you can go on my website and you can phone me up and spend 90 bucks and I'll spend some time with you on the phone